pollution research at the institution is an interesting history. Uh, but to understand it, I think we need to go back to the early days of understanding oil pollution in the marine environment. So what happened was a barge went ashore in September 1969 and it spilled number two fuel oil, which is home heating oil, pretty much on the doorsteps of many of the scientists who worked at the institution here. There were flounders and eels and all kinds of invertebrates coming ashore on the beach. The fish in general had no locomotion. You have a picturesque cove that is now covered with black, number two fuel oil, and a wave of death. We went every place that we knew and photographed. The mortality was incredible. This unbelievable team had formed Max Bloomer, chemist, George Souza, shellfish agent, and then Howard Sanders, and my job was to go out and collect the samples. So we got a small boat and uh, did a trawl sample. When we brought that up, we had several kinds of things in that net. We had fish and invertebrates of all kinds, amphipods, uh, different clams, but most everything was alive. So the idea was, after Howard and I talked, is let's let about probably two or three days go by and then repeat this to find out what's happening to the offshore animals. Almost everything in that trawl sample was dead. The oil was not just confined to intertidal. It was in deep water also. A gentleman by the name of Dr. Max Bloomer. He was Swiss. He worked for an oil company. He brought a tool. It was gas chromatography. He was able to fingerprint the oil. You had modern science brought to bear on this oil spill. When the slick disappeared, and as people say, out of sight, out of mind was what most people thought, they were able to show that indeed the oil still persisted in the muds. There were biological effects that you could correlate with the concentrations of oil. So the combination of the marine biology and the oil, fingerprinting of the oil, formed a team so that you could not break the cause and effect of the oil and the animals that were impacted. Max Bloomer once said to me, I've been funded for years by the taxpayers and they probably didn't have any idea what I was doing. And now I have an opportunity to show them that what they invested in has real tangible results that can be helpful to them. And what happened was this didn't sit very well with many of the public relations specialists and some of the folks in charge of oil companies. And so they came under really vicious attack in the press and by political means. And I remember reading papers, and the sole purpose was to discredit our work. But they stood their ground, and they spoke out. Not only did they publish peer-reviewed scientific publications, but they also wrote stories that could be understood by the lay public. They testified in Congress. They brought their story to international conventions and meetings. It just hit a home run on the spill. And so they laid down this framework for the first seven years of the spill that just was spectacular data. And before long, people were doing the same thing. They were using many of the similar technologies and approaches in other areas, in other oil spills. They were pioneers, really, in trying to look at the effects of the spill, the chemistry related to the transport of the spill, and the biological responses of the organisms. And they followed that community quite closely um, for a long period of time. My research group uh, is about the third and fourth generations of scientists who started studying the spill in 2000. Uh, we were working off the shoulders of giants, um, Max Bloomer, Howie Sanders, John Teal, and many others. 
It's a rock. Yep, and you can still smell diesel. What makes the oil in this place still want to persist? We think it's because the microbes decided to stop eating it. This is what we're studying and uh, and we're still watching and looking and seeing how the oil changes with time. And that is what brings us to the present day responses to oil spills, starting with the fact that the best thing you can do is not have a spill. <laughs>